FaceTimed me last night I don't mean to fan, but what in the fuck do you want from me? There's nothing to say unless you got an apology No, no, like now that I'm up, you want to Welcome to Talento Latinos from Latinos in Michigan TV I'm your host Liliana Ospina Herstedt Tonight we have a very special guest. His name is Tommy Papi, an Afro-Colombian artist. Tommy is, a, is an Afro-Colombian, a biracial artist, and I'm very excited to interview him because his mother is Colombian like me, and his dad is African-American. Tommy, tell me more about your experience growing up as a biracial child here in Michigan. I was born in Michigan. Um, I've been here all my life. Um, my, uh, I have my, my mom born in Colombia. My dad was born Detroit, and I believe he moved to Washington for school, and then he came back to Detroit. Well, it was, it was. I feel like it's a different experience than most people because in school, I, I well, bless my family. You know, they got me to very nice school, and but I was one of the only people of color there. You know what I mean? It's, it's. It's, it's hard when you feel so different, but then, you know, it, as the time went on, I started realizing how important it was to be in touch with my culture and how, how it's not, it's not something, uh, it's not something to be ashamed of because I, I just wanted to fit in. I, I honestly just wanted to fit in. And I realized speaking two languages, it puts me at an advantage. I'm more closer to my community. I, it defines who I am. And so on my African-American side, you know, I have a, a big family. I have my dad's side, I have my aunt and uh, my uncle. Uh, unfortunately, both my grandparents have passed and um, I have, and they have their old family in Virginia. And um, then on my mom's side, as you know, Colombia, everyone is, is in Cali or Bogota. Um, used to go there all the time when I was, uh, uh, a child now it's kind of harder with the pandemic and everything right um it and i think that um it makes our experience unique you know it makes it, you get to see both sides so you are very multicultural in your music and in your influence because your mother is from cali your dad is african-american yet you are here in michigan absolutely and you know it's so amazing the the the, the Latin, Latino community is is so is so interwoven, so amazing. <laughs> because I there's people that I've met I uh, I met when I was maybe like 11 years old, and they're posting my songs, and they're all so supportive. It's it's such a it's just strong community that that really takes time to to uplift everyone and make sure everyone is good. So you had the experience and the influence of the Colombian culture and the African-American culture and your dad was a musician. Can you tell us more about that experience? Well, I've, every time I, since I've been a child, I've always been into music. My dad, he was in a band back before he was a dentist and he was, he was playing guitar, performing on stage. I think I have a picture somewhere of that, but, um, I think that's been in my blood and I whenever I was hearing music I would always like I would always try and put my own little like little spin on it I try and rap a little bit or I tried to sing a little chorus or melody to it and it wasn't until about I want to say 2016 2017 I just started writing songs I've been writing and writing and this is this year has been the first time I, I really want to Although the coronavirus is such an awful thing, it's given me a lot of time to be by myself. And I, I finally decided that I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I have to do. I'm gonna, I got, I, I got the program and now I just started this year into producing. But uh, ever since like 2017 or 2016, I have like 139 songs that I've just been written. I just have to record it. I just, it, it, some of them can't be used, obviously, because it's like from three years ago, I have the same energy. I can't capture that, but it's, it's, um, uh, it's been something I've been planning for a long time. And it's, it's finally, it's nice to see it. It's starting to pan out because um, when I first, my first song, my first week, I got 400 listens over all platforms. And like, I, I, I didn't think, I thought I'd get like, like 10 people would listen to it or something and just be like, oh, wow, okay, good for you, you're trying. But 
it's I feel like both communities, Latino community, African Americans, and my school people, family, parents, everyone. It's amazing. One of the things that I love about social media is that allowed many artists to promote their work, their music. Do you use social media? Absolutely, because they have services like uh, Distro Kid or CD Baby that you can just they they give you a hundred percent of everything. You don't have to you just they just put it on and they uh, transfer it to everything Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Tidal, Pandora. It's 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 it just becoming that much easier to to be able to get your songs out there and get your platform and and say what you need to say to to help or to for yourself or just just to be part of something bigger. Tell us how can people find you on social media? Uh, well, on my Instagram, uh, it's underscore at, I'm sorry, at underscore Tommy Poppy with an I and then underscore again. And then um, on my Spotify, my SoundCloud, my Apple Music, it is just Tommy Poppy, one word. Tell me more about your name. Why Tommy Poppy? Poppy for me, for Latinas, is like something kind of upset. So I call my, my husband Poppy. But I wanted to know if you mix the influence from your African American culture and the Latino culture to get your name. I, I wanted to mix them both, exactly. <laughs> I got I got it from um at, at college I would always wear Tommy Hill figure. I'd always uh, have some sort of Tommy Hill figure on me. And um, I guess I, I had it as my Twitter name and then everyone started I not everyone I should say a, a good hand people started calling me that as a uh, they started knowing me better and I just stuck with it. It just, it just stuck with me. And I... What inspired you to make music? What makes you different from other artists when you are creating music? Well, I think that it's hard to be different in, in this day and age, but what makes an artist is finding the inspiration from anywhere in the world, anywhere. And where I think I specialize is that I try and, uh, I tell a story, I try and paint a picture. I want you to, I want you to smell the sounds. I want you to hear the, the, the colors all, all like it, it's a, it's a, a paradox, but uh, that's, uh, it's on purpose to try and say that you should be able to see, you should be able to close your eyes and hear. And it's, it's a hard thing to do, but I, I get a lot of inspiration from poetry. I do poetry on the side. Also, I have a, a poetry page on Instagram and it just, I, that was even before music, but uh, but uh, I think that it's all that um, music, poetry, dance, um, video production, all those sorts of things are up to interpretation, and that's what makes it so beautiful. Because it's what in our times right now, where we've been in, we've been stuck inside from the pandemic. We have to do uh, things online. It's the culture of art that has made things bearable in my opinion you know what i mean a lot of artists and a lot of musicians have different messages in their music what is the message that you want to promote doing music so for this last song it was it was a lot about um it was about heartbreak and it was about um about not going back you know a lot of people want to keep going in that same situation and it's not good for the soul because you don't, you, everything starts to get obscured. You don't understand like what's love or what's right, what's wrong. And, and people can, it, you can get lost in that. And the message I was trying to send in that song was you don't have to go back. You can keep, you can still be you and without a person, it's important to care about yourself and love yourself. And it's, it's okay to be sad, but you need to take the time to understand that it's not forever. And for this EP, I'm making it so it's, it's for people that have unspoken emotions that it gets to be said in a song. You can, you can hear it, you can feel it, and maybe that'll bring some um, comfort because I know music has helped me through a lot of, a lot of times. When I have, uh, when I've been, uh, uh, I've been, I haven't been well. I've been sad. I've been angry. I've been happy. It's just there's a song for everything, and I'm hoping to add to that category of a song for heartbreak, for 
R&B and all that sorts of things. But another message I want to put is that anyone can do this. If you have a laptop, if you have a microphone, anyone can do this. It's it's you could get a free trial of the same thing you can record it you can get a beat off youtube and as long as you have something to say and you are musically inclined there's nothing stopping you anymore there's that you especially now in the quarantine uh, we have all the time in the world if we because we can't go anywhere right but um i i think that um we should all take time to love ourselves and care about our mental health and do what we need to do to be better versions of ourselves and how do you create your music? Do you play any instruments? Do you have any specific technique? It's funny. Well, I can I can play the piano. I'm not I'm not I'm not Beethoven, but I still I, I can work away around piano. I'm trying to learn guitar right now. But um, what I use when I'm recording my music is I use the metronome. It goes two, 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 two. And I think that <laughs> yes. And I think that um, it get it's it's the best way for me to when I'm just when I'm just writing. If I was trying to compose uh, maybe a piano uh, melody or, or a chord progression, that'd be different. But because you can just place it each time it ticks, that's where it starts. Then it stops, and that's another place. So you can. That's when the words. If you use powerful words, you put those powerful words when the metronome hits because that's when they have the most effect. It, it gets amplified with that. And so I think um, with the combination of poetry and rhythm, you can really get your message across and say a lot of powerful things because words, they, they have so much more power than anyone really believes. There's a book I read called The Secret Nine of Pronouns that tells us all the things you can learn about a person in just like three sentences. And I, I read that very closely and I, I, I've, I've come to believe a lot from Um, Yes, because I mean, I would love to, I'd obviously love, who wouldn't want to blow up? Who wouldn't want to be mainstream? But um, I, I don't know, because I want to, I want to use that to give back to the communities. I want to, and that can, some people think that's the wrong route. You got to use it to, to keep uh, advertising and get yourself to every position. Well, I, it's, if it wasn't for the people that got me there, then how am I, how can I, how can I just go up and, and neglect it? So I've been, I've been trying, I'm actually planning to do a, a city cleanup, uh, hopefully for promotion and to like help the people around the city. I want to, we're going to, uh, the plan is to get on the, on the West Grand Boulevard right on Detroit and we're going to clean up all the sides because you always see a crash around there and I'm going to uh, have a tent and also have a uh, clothing donation center uh, kind of help the collaborates and we're going to donate clothes to people in the upcoming winter time and it's going to be a place hopefully we can all come together and feel better about helping our community and giving back to our community so the future is unpredictable but it's important to talk about it and to plan ahead how do you see yourself in five years i think i will see myself in five years i don't think i will have blown up yet but i think that I will be consistent in the industry where I know I'll have the connections possible to to uplift others into my position while also giving back to the people. And what will be the message that you will give to artists that want to make music but they are afraid to move forward? And the, and that, and this is the last question. What will be the message for for the people that are that want to do music, but they don't do it because they're afraid. That if you're afraid, write that you're afraid. That's what someone told me once. They said, I, I was, I told him I, we were working on songs together and yeah, and I was like, I don't know what to write. I feel like I, if I keep writing, I'm going to stop. I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to best the, the last song that I did. He said, well, write about that because that's the emotion you feel right now. And that could be the greatest song ever to people who feel just like you. And I think that everyone should take that little advice and make a song about that or, or play the guitar if they've never done it before or whatever, because it, it, is, it is life to be able to create something that you truly believe in. That is happiness to me. I think that everyone can feel that. 
Thank you for watching us. If you like this video, please share it in your social media and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.